In today's episode, we'll be talking about how soon after your LH surge will you ovulate. I'm Dr. Perkins, a board certified OBGYN, and I love talking about this and so much more. If you're interested in learning, please join us as we talk about LH surges. <music> By the end of this video, you will learn that the LH surge is probably the most important part of your menstrual cycle. We will review when exactly this LH surge may occur, and we will talk about when exactly to have sex after your LH surge. Let's dive on in. Let's start by reviewing the menstrual cycle so that we can understand exactly when the LH surge will happen. Now this cycle will be based on a 28 day cycle. If we split this 28 days in the middle, this will be ovulation, halfway between zero and 28 days. Now, if your cycles are greater than 28 days or even less than 28 days, know that the point of ovulation is always 14 days before your next period. This is important, this is a period, and here would be a period. Now, it's important to know that ovulation happens 14 days before so that you can anticipate when ovulation should happen. In this cycle, we have hormones like your estrogens, we have another hormone, your progesterone, and we also have luteinizing hormone. Luteinizing hormone is always in your system in a small amount. About 48 hours before you ovulate, you will have what is known as your LH surge. This right here is the most important part of your cycle because this will give you the information that you need for getting pregnant. It works and it works every time. Now, let's take a deeper look into this. All of our hormones as female start in the brain. So I'm going to draw a little brain. Let's draw the brain right over here, okay? So this is a funny looking brain, but it works, and it works for us today. Right here in our brain, we have the hypothalamus, which is an organ, and it is very important for starting the cycle, spelling that incorrectly there, okay? That's a thalamus. It starts the process of releasing hormones, and the main hormone that the hypothalamus will release in your body is called G N R H for short. Now, that hormone, which is somewhere, oh, let's change that a little bit. Let's add our hypothalamus. And so the GnRH is released into your blood, but really communicates with the anterior pituitary, which is another gland in the base of your brain. That anterior pituitary will then release the next hormone that is necessary in this ovulation process. Those hormones, one, luteinizing hormone, or LH, and the second is FSH, which literally means follicle stimulating hormone. I want you to understand that a follicle is a space, it's a cyst. Inside of this follicle is your egg that you were born with that is now maturing. So if I were to draw this follicle on the side, the follicle will be a circle, and inside of it will be this tiny egg that is maturing, and the follicle presents the egg with all the nutrients and everything that it needs to mature all the way. Now the LH and FSH now goes into the bloodstream and heads on over to your ovary. Let's bring it from here and let's draw the ovary here. Inside of the ovary is our follicle. So we'll put that back on the board over here just like that. And inside of here, as I mentioned before, your egg is in the process of maturing. This is our ovary. And in response to the LH and the FSH, your ovary will then start allowing this egg to grow and grow and grow. And at the same time, 
it is releasing estrogens and progesterones. As this egg gets bigger and bigger and bigger, this egg, this follicle, same thing, the levels of hormone increases in the body to the point where a feedback goes back to the brain to say, hey, we're maturing, we're getting large, we're increasing in size, we're at a really good place, we're almost ready to be ovulated. And so once the hypothalamus gets that message again, it increases the GNRH, goes to the anterior pituitary, the anterior pituitary increases the amount of LH that is being released into your body, and boom, this is when your body and your ovary knows it is time for us to ovulate. Now, it takes a total of 24 to 48 hours after that message goes back to the brain and the surge happens by that increase for your body and your ovaries to release this wonderful mature egg that has been producing for the last 14 days and maturing over that time. That's the message for the egg to release from the ovary. It may seem like it's like so many steps, but it's a system that works and it works every time. But let's talk a little bit more about this. If you're enjoying all our talks and our information today, please go ahead and subscribe below. And while you're at it, turn on your notification bell. That way, as more videos such as this one are released, you'll be notified right away. Now, you might be wondering, well, how exactly do I know when this surge has happened? There are LH testing strips that you can get at Amazon, you can get in a pharmacy, and they will detect in your system exactly when that surge happens. This is my recommendation to you if you're trying to get pregnant and you'd like to know exactly when you're going to ovulate. As soon as your period ends, I would recommend testing your LH every single day. And what you'll notice is that because LH is always in our systems, the LH will be very low, but be present. And at some point in your cycle, hopefully around the midway point or 14 days before your next period would be due, you will notice that your level of LH in your body will suddenly get really strong and really high. At that point, this is when you become sexually active, and I would recommend trying to have sex two to three times over the next 48 hours. With that, you are sure to cover all the bases and possibilities so that egg and sperm will meet at the exact time. Timing is really important here. This is because we know that once the egg has been released into the body, it will survive for 18 to 24 hours. So we don't have a lot of time to play with here. And so with that, you want to absolutely time your cycles so that he will be great and have the energy that he needs to perform back to back, but also to be sure that you are active at the right time. Now, we do know that sperm can last inside for up to five to six days. Now, that doesn't mean that we should try to have sex once before and hope that a sperm will survive during that time frame because they can survive that long, but a majority of them don't. And so you want to target that sexual intercourse at the right time. So just to review again, if you've seen that your surge has happened, you have 48 hours tops to be able to catch your egg and to be able to fertilize it before it dies. So I hope this helps you today. It's been a pleasure speaking with you. I have a free ebook that I'd like to offer you today and to thank you for really being here and watching our videos and sharing with others as well. And with that, that ebook is called Hormones Don't Lie. These are hormones, some of them, and they speak the truth. To find out more about this, click the link below, receive and read your free copy. And of course, if you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. I'm Dr. Perkins, a board-certified OBGYN, and it's been a pleasure. Thank you.